one of the owners of Rudy Jones Gallery, my wife Robin Jones is, is, is here as well. Uh, we're here today to talk about Juneteenth as well as the phenomenal, phenomenal artists that we have present here today. Zinzi Harley is going to run this uh, intervention. I'm going to call it intervention without, without knowing a, a better word to associate with it. But I think it's going to be insightful. I think you folks will enjoy what these folks have to say about their works and about the meaning of Juneteenth and how Juneteenth ties into their artistic talent. And I'm going to step out and let Zinzi Harley take over. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Zinzi Harley. Um, I'm a curator and creative consultant. I'm based in Philadelphia, um, formerly the assistant curator at the African American Museum in Philadelphia. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. I always love hosting programming in black exhibition spaces, so I'm excited to be here with Jasmine Sabri, and I'm also excited to be here with Andromeda Cook, two really exciting artists that are showing work with the gallery in the Phenomenal Women Show. I'm going to speak up a little bit so everybody can hear me. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Juneteenth, um, the legacy of Juneteenth, and the role of black women within, you know, honoring this really historic milestone for African Americans within this country. Um, I think this show really speaks to a lot of the themes that we'll be discussing today um, regarding the importance of women within advocating for social justice, um, but also the creativity that allows us to do such incredible work. So I'm so excited to talk with both of you guys today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just introduce both of you guys and then we'll hop into talking a little bit about what Juneteenth is, the holiday, and what that means to us. So I'm going to start with Andromeda. Um, Andromeda is a Philadelphia native, uh, formerly an educator as an elementary school teacher um, and a mother to a beautiful five-year-old boy. Um, her work really seeks to heal and she uses her medium to really work through uh, nurturing her inner child which is really exciting, so we'll be getting into that as well. Um, she's very drawn to Jean-Michel Basquiat, which is a motif that you'll see very common in her work. Um, she believes his story, image, and creativity has really touched her in numerous ways. Um, and she likes how she focuses on these various dichotomies uh, and has really married so many of these um, themes within his art. Today, we're also gonna be talking with Jasmine Sabri, a good friend which I have gotten closer with over the past year, so I'm excited to be here with her. Um, she's a New Jersey-based multimedia artist that focuses on figurative and abstract works. Um, these mixed media collages really focus on various experiences within Jasmine's life, including social justice, peace, and healing. Um, and I think what's most interesting about her work is the exploration of the African diaspora, um, looking into beauty, um, specifically looking at skin, and know what that means in the endangerment and also empowerment of black bodies. So I'm really excited to chat more about that as well. So I think to kick it off, it's important to really acknowledge, you know, what this holiday that we're honoring is. Many people are not as aware of the origins of Juneteenth, so I'll give you guys a little bit of background on that. Um, so June 19th, 1865, Union troops uh, arrived in Galveston, Texas. Um, and this is when the news that, you know, uh, emancipation had been passed and that slavery um, was no longer, you know, this, this threat of the United States of America. Um, I know as most African Americans know in this country that uh, slavery has just transferred over to other um, areas of our, of our unique experience that we have in this country. However, this was the first step to our collective liberation, one could say. So today we're going to be talking about this milestone that we've had, um, the importance of it to us, and we're also going to talk about um, some figures in Philadelphia that have contributed to that. Um, I just want to start off by asking both of you ladies, um, what does Juneteenth mean to you guys? Um, I'll let Andr uh, Andromeda kick it off. Juneteenth means um, just celebrating our, our greatness, honoring our ancestors, um, sharing love, spreading love, talking about healing, uplifting each other, um, and just pouring as much love as we can into each other. Because like when you turn the TV on, and 
majority of what we see on the TV is, you know, us being nasty towards each other. Um, it's just, it's not who we really are as a people. Um, as a people, we, we, we know how to come together and, and really like love on each other and set trends and um, just express ourselves in, in loving ways. So every year I get super excited to, to celebrate Juneteenth because it just highlights how powerful we are. It highlights um, the importance of our spirituality, how much we've evolved over time. And um, the, the, the main thing that I really enjoy about Juneteenth is just focusing on our history because our history is it's so rich. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's like the foundation of not just America, but the, the whole entire world. Mm -hmm. um, we're strong people, we're beautiful people, and Juneteenth really highlights that. So Juneteenth is just, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful holiday for me. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I really love that you said that um, many times in like pop culture and media, we don't really get to see uh, the true ways that, or the original ways that we as a community were engaging with one another. And I think love was more so the message at one point than building community. And we've been drawn away from that. Um, and I think also as African Americans, just our culture is oftentimes diluted due to, you know, being situated in this country in America. And although we're very infused throughout the culture, uh, we're often just celebrating, you know, holidays that or pass on to us as opposed to things that are just inherently um, coming from our, our collective experience. So I think that's a great point that you made. Jasmine, what does Juneteenth mean to you? Sure. <clears throat> I think for me, Juneteenth is really um, a celebration of our camaraderie as a community um, and just really a celebration of our resilience as a people. Um, I like to, when I like, examine the like African diaspora and things. I really um, appreciate the way that no matter where we were dispersed around the world, there was always this common idea that none of us are free unless all of us are free. And in thinking um, back in all of these different periods of liberation from, you know, uh, South America, Central America, North America, you know, even in Europe, um, how, so many groups of us were freed at different times, mm -hmm. um, but we didn't allow that to like deter the fight. We wanted to ensure that all of our people who were dispersed from Africa had the chance to experience freedom, and that became a trickle effect all throughout the diaspora. Um, and so, when I think about how you know, um, you know, the slaves maybe along the East Coast and you know, and the South. Um, may have been freed, you know, earlier with the Emancipation Proclamation, and then you come to find that there were, you know, sects of African slaves who had still gone through two more years after that of being deceived um, into believing that they were still under this, you know, oppressive system of slavery. Um, and we didn't allow that to fight, we didn't leave anyone behind, and we really um, ensured that we were all free. And so I really look at it as this like really deeply um, influential and spiritual like celebration of our collective freedom, um, our collective love. Um, and it just really excites me that we've come to this place where we are able to learn about all of this richness in our history um, that has kind of been concealed from us. Um, and so I really love it. I think it's a beautiful holiday, um, a true expression of independence and freedom. Um, and I come from a majority black town and we do like a really big festival and things um, for Juneteenth. So I'm just really great. I'm really grateful that we arrived at this place in our history where we can celebrate all that we are, all of our um, struggles, all of our trials and all of our accomplishments. So yeah, I think that's, you're, you're so right. Um, we really get to look at the resilience within our community. Um, and I think it's amazing for us in the contemporary to have these like discovery opportunities, um, especially as we are allowed to, you know, come together and unify and live in communities that really are um, 
you know, black centered, and that's something that really was just a privilege at one point, and it still is today in many ways, but now we're feeling more entitled to ha taking up our own space. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that you talked about the dispersal of, of um, black and brown folks, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I think that's the perfect time to welcome another artist that we're actually going to be um, enjoying this conversation with, which is Cassie Cova, who's going to be uh, joining us from Barcelona, uh, which goes to show how widespread we are. Um, Cassie Cova grew up in Southern Carolina, was raised in a multicultural family, um, coming from an Afro-European um, home, and then having the heritage of you know growing up within America has really influenced her work as she's traveled to over 28 countries um, during her lifetime so far. Um, she received her BA in Art History and Criticism at the University of California, San Diego, um, and a lot of that has shaped her understanding of art. Um, and her movement-based practice that is really infused in this visual culture she has as well. So I'm happy to also welcome Cassie Kova to the conversation. Um, I love that you started talking about some of, you know, the traditions that you've had growing up in a predominantly black um, town and neighborhood. Um, I definitely did not have that experience growing up in the South. However, I think that, you know, many of the customs are uh, infused into Southern heritage and culture. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how have you been able to really celebrate Juneteenth um, and, and do that as you've grown older, share that with younger generations as well? Because I think now young people are really starting to understand like, okay, this is something that I can make a tradition for myself even if it wasn't something that, you know, was a part of my, my customs. Um, in their youth, so. Yeah, I would say it's really been in recent years, I think with all of the, um, the media broadcasting of it, um, that our community even learned about Juneteenth. It, it's been a very recent um, awakening for us. Um, and so I think as soon as we learned of it, um, the community just really took charge. Um, and so we have like a really big festival every year um, in our like main park um, where people come out and they bend and they dance and we have like African drums and like all of the things, performances. Um, and so it's just been a very rich experience for me to be able to kind of dive into that um, with my family and really be able to learn about Juneteenth and you know about more of our history because I'm, a, I'm an African diasporic history fanatic anyway, so, so that's just been really, um, really fun to learn about and dive into. I've always had a bit of, like, you called it privilege, um, of growing up in Willingboro, where it's a, it's a very unique place where it's a um, small town, uh, majority black suburb, um, and so I did have the privilege of growing up and learning about a lot of um, my history and things like that. Um, that I didn't realize that I was privileged to have until I actually left and went um, to Clark Atlanta for college. Um, and that was when I realized that, oh my goodness, like all black people don't get to have this experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I definitely feel blessed um, for my community and like all of the um, intentionality that they have when it comes to really centering black history in the day to day and in the community culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's really exciting. Um, I, I think even as someone of West Indian descent, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, that goes into, you know, just the nuance of the diaspora, and relating back to Africa as well. Mm -hmm. But it's always just really fun to get to start observing more of like, you know, just the, the original traditions that you would have been doing had you not, you know, mm -hmm. been snatched from where exactly. you should have been. Exactly. Uh, and, and that's just to say it in the, the lightest way possible, but um, I think it really, it helps you discover who you are in a way. Mm -hmm. and, um, you can develop this sense of individuality, you have this guidance from you know your ancestors and those that walked the land before you. And even being from the South, I feel that in a way, um, being very in touch with you know, the grounds that I'm walking on and the, those that, you know, traverse these lands before us. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, with the opportunity to celebrate within your community, even if it's like, you know, with festivals like they do that just happened recently, you know, you really get to just experience your culture in a very um, unique, uniquely intimate way. 
um, especially now that we haven't always been able to do. What are some of the customs that you have observed in Rama? Well, um, I grew up in South Philly. Mm -hmm. Um, like around the Tiny Market area, but my grandmother, she lived right off of South Street. Mm -hmm. So we were fortunate enough to to partake in like the festivals mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And my grandmother, um, her name is Rose. She's an amazing woman. She's always been like tapped into our history and just enforcing those um those just like little rituals, just um just. Just uh, I don't know, like just uh, just helping us understand like where we come from and how beautiful we are and how rich our history is. Mm -hmm. So um, that was my introduction to um, celebrating Juneteenth or just events around like our culture when I was younger. And then as I got older, um, I think I kind of like strayed away from all of that because I. I was I grew up in a Catholic school, mm -hmm. so I went to a Catholic grade school. I went to a Catholic high school. I went to a Catholic college, and none of that stuff was told about. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, after I graduated, I was just oblivious to a lot of it and everything that my grandmother kind of like instilled in us. I kind of like strayed away from it, mm -hmm. and I would say um, I tapped back into it like deeply once I started um, teaching arts to my students. Mm -hmm. And that was, let me say, like six years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just studying our, our history and our culture, I felt like it was my duty to um, teach us, well, my students at the time about black history and um, just everything about Juneteenth and like you said, Doomsday and festivals and stuff like that. But um, Recently, uh, when I gave up my career, my teaching career, three years ago, and I started pursuing my passion full time, mm -hmm. and um, I, I started partaking in the events and just started to um, involve myself more in um, supporting um, just us and, and the culture and our people. But um, yeah, I would say it's been it's been um, a beautiful journey. Because um, I've just been, I've just been diving in, just diving in. Like um, I have this connection with Harriet Tubman. Um, she's just an amazing woman. Um, it's just, it's just so much. There's so much to even talk about. Um, yeah, it's just so much. Like our history is just, it's, it's deep. It's beautiful, and there's so many different um, people to highlight and um, to just pay homage to and be thankful for. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like it's it's something that was always embedded in me, something that I strayed away from, and now it's something that I'm tapping back into now. And it's like, it feels like it's new, but it's not, it's always been there. So, yes, yeah. Oh my gosh, you've made several points during, you know, um, your statement, like, you know, a lot of the things that I did, you know, coming up uh, were just simple things like grilling out, you know, and, you know, enjoying some of just like the simple pleasures. Um, I think that's typically how we like to do it down mm -hmm. south. So usually we would celebrate Juneteenth and holidays like that um, by just enjoying a meal with family, um, having just a leisurely day to ourselves. And I think that's what so many, um, of the initiatives that we're just taking on now with self-care and healing and focusing on our our collective healing as black people, um, it's very important. And I think that's another thing that Juneteenth really strives to do is to allow ourselves to tap back into you know our ancestors and really uh, allow them to guide us in, in this journey that we're taking to, to better ourselves and better our communities. And I love that you talked about um, you know, this duty you feel to your students and the youth to um, teach them about this and enlighten them. Um, I think we have an obligation to ourselves in a way to do the same and make sure that, you know, um, we get the privilege of being able to enjoy what it is to be black, mm -hmm. um, which is our right. And although we've had a lot of rights taken from us, I think that's something that um, we just need to really tap into. There's so many black artists that are really um, uplifting black leisure and black joy and making that the focus of their work as opposed to a lot of the trauma that 
we've experienced, um, there's definitely an upside to, to our experiences. I think it's amazing that you also talked about um, your grandmother and how influential she was for us. You know, your, your experience growing up and being able to honor, you know, these traditions. Um, I think black women have always been the ones to really carry on these traditions and um, to enlighten us and make sure that, you know, we feel empowered to do so and to take part in these rituals and things that really make us um, feel full. So with that being said, I think I would love to just touch base on a really amazing woman named Opal Lee, who was just here. Um, June 5th of 2023, so this is fairly recent. A lot of people call her the grandmother of Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. um, so she was here raising a flag for Juneteenth in Philadelphia. She's originally from Texas. Um, and this woman is 96 years old. It's just really amazing to hear her story. Um, she's a organizer, an activist, and a former educator, which goes to show, you know, the work is being done and continues to be done. Um, and she consistently was just all about making sure Juneteenth was really uplifted and that people understood the holiday and the importance of it. Um, and she would organize these 2.5 mile long walks for people to acknowledge how long it took for people to realize that you know they had been emancipated and that their freedom was finally theirs. Um, and this woman was very integral in you know Joe Biden passing. Um, this legislation to have Juneteenth become a federal holiday. Mm -hmm. So I think this is somebody, you know, that has been in Philadelphia, the community in a city that is very black. Mm -hmm. um, these chocolate cities, even you talking about, you know, going to Clark and being situated in, in Atlanta. It's very important that we have people like this within our community that allow us to continue to celebrate um, and show us that, you know, women are the ultimate caretakers of our communities. Which brings me to wanting to just discuss, you know, as as female artists, you know, what what do you feel about, you know, the act of community care? How is that embodied in your work, and um, is that ever, you know, a weight that you feel you have to carry, or is it something that makes you feel very, you know, excited about the future, or liberated in a way? Yeah. Either one of you guys can go first. I think. Um um, I'm thinking about the question of is, is it a weight or is it something that I embody? Um, I think there are definitely expectations yeah. <laughs> um, on us as women artists, um, especially as black women artists, um, for, to make sure that we are um, giving a certain measure of care and, and inclusion of these like hot topics in our work. Um, for me, personally, I feel like I embody that only because, like, it's been so instilled in me. I think since I was maybe five, I did, like, my first Black History play, and, like, you know, we danced to, like, we are conquerors and things. So it's always just, I think, the community and, like, um, social justice work and, like, liberation work has always been so deeply ingrained in me. Um, even like in my adolescence, we would have a, a heritage play and I was always like very involved in performing arts. Um, and I had like these amazing educators, amazing black educators who, you know, would fight for their own curriculums in school and make sure that they're teaching us a more, you know, true version of, you know, global history and making sure that they're really getting into our, you know, history as black children. Um, and then going from that experience to at HBCU, at Clarkland University, and, you know, getting even more of that. So it, it kind of like was always deeply a part of me. And so um, it's only natural, I think, for it to spill into the work that I do. Um, my work is very deeply community-based. Um, from the figures that I use um, are just people, you know, in the community of Philadelphia, the community of Willowboro, um, and my own family. Um, and it's really just all about how we can use art to heal our community and to really discover who we are. And I think even through that work, um, I've discovered so much about myself as a black woman. And I feel it, it would be highway robbery to not share that with, you know, the rest of the community in the world. So I definitely think that 
I embody um, that responsibility as a woman. Um, I kind of like accept the charge, I guess. <laughs> um, but I think it's beautiful that I'm able to even do all of these things and learn all of these things and be able to share that with the rest of the world and the world have it. So. How about you, Andromeda? So, I remember going on your page recently for the first time, and I was I was so wild by your art. I was just so wild. My best friend, she has lupus, mm -hmm. so just that connection right there. I was I would, I just I like for me as an artist, like I'm so big on healing, teaching people how to heal themselves, and it started out with me just wanting to heal myself. That's where I, like, when I started, like, painting, I was, like, I was doing it because it was my job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, I was an art teacher, and then by me teaching art to the students, I, I started to see that it wasn't just teaching the kids how to draw, like, just my presence and bringing the kids into the classroom and just having them express themselves like it was actually healing the children. Mm -hmm. And then in turn, it was healing the environment. I mean, I was placed in a, a rough school, a, a rough public school, and these, these children, they were hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and just by me being there, I changed the, the, the energy in the whole building. Um, everybody came to my classroom. All the students love just skipping lunch and going to Ms. Cook's class just to do whatever, like whatever. And my main message to my students was there's no such thing as a mistake when it comes to art. Just come in my room and if you want to sit and doodle, I'm going to tell you that that's beautiful because it's you expressing yourself and it's healing. And that's what, that's what happened for me. Um, your, your art is amazing. It's, it's healing, it's um, informative, it's, it's, it's everything. Like, I, 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 I can feel it, I can feel it. Um, and just listening to you talk about your history, like your upbringing and just you. Um, I didn't have that. Um, like I said, I, 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 I was raised by, I have a beautiful family, but I was in a Catholic, church, uh, Catholic school mm -hmm. my entire life. So, <laughs> so you know how it is. Like there's just the, the history is not there. The um the genuineness is not there. And for me, I didn't I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. And I, I, I like I just feel like I was kind of like jet out of a out of a lot. You know. Um, and. Uh, yeah, art is just, it's, it's powerful. And I, I didn't realize how powerful it was until I started teaching it. And at the time, when I started teaching art, I was going through so much mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, I had just become a mom for the first time. And I was experiencing, like, just a lot of, like, trauma. Mm -hmm. And... God put me in that position for a reason. I didn't understand it at the time, because I, I, I could have done just about any job. I could have picked any career. And it's crazy how God put me in that position to be an art teacher. Um, it, when, when, I, when I started teaching art, um, it happened so organically. Like I originally started um, teaching as a substitute teacher. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would pick up the, um, the art teaching positions because I was nervous of speaking. I didn't think that I could teach. Um, I just was like just nervous to be myself, but I wanted to, I wanted to teach. I just wanted something that could um, supplement me at the time and um, just thinking of like the the time. Like I wanted to be with my son. I wanted to have control of my hours at the time. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do substitute teaching because I can teach whenever I wanna teach. But I didn't even realize what, what God was doing at the time. Um, I needed a lot of healing. I needed a lot of love. I needed a lot, I just needed a lot um, at the time. And art, art saved my life. It saved my life and um, it's just, 
it's just such a beautiful experience to, to be here now talking about um, the power of art because like I said, like I've always loved art. Like I, I took art classes in high school. Um, at the time, I loved to study uh, Salvatore Dali. My mom, she would have like my paintings like all over her house. So I was always into art, but it just wasn't, it wasn't the right way. I didn't have that genuine connection to it. I really didn't understand um, the power in art. So now when I'm, I'm creating these paintings, they come from a different space now. They're coming from um, me knowing how important uh, words are, how powerful words are. And it's just so much like um, when, when I think of words, it makes me think of like the music that we listen to. It makes me think of the television shows that's put out into the world for um, our students. Like it just just for us, period. Like for something we watch on TV and how how unhealthy majority of the stuff is that we take in. And so um, in a lot of my paintings, I'll say something like uh, guard your gate because you have to like really pay attention and be mindful of what you're watching because when you're you know, taking in those words and just all that stuff, like it's, it does stuff to us. It controls us, it controls how we think, it controls how we operate from day to day. And for a long time, I didn't realize that. I was, I was, I was the one that was, I, I loved, you know, hardcore rap music and, you know, just things that wasn't really healthy for me. So it's like now that I'm older and I'm, I'm, I'm more aware, I feel like it is my duty. To, to, to put that message out into the world to let everybody know, not just my students anymore. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like have like the loudest voice in the world to let everybody know, like, no, like we really need to take a step back and pay attention to what we're putting into our bodies. Mm -hmm. And when I say like what we're putting into our bodies, it's not just like the food, that's a whole other subject, but it's the things that we look at. Mm -hmm. And, um, like one time I, I went to Paris and I went to the um it's what's the it's the the Louvre. The Louvre. <laughs> and they have amazing art. They have amazing art, but it to me it lacks substance. Like it it it, it didn't really do anything for me. Yeah, so emotion, like passion, all of that, that stuff. So it just it just wowed me. I'm like how are we celebrating all of these artists? And for me as a teacher, I'm teaching my students about, you know, these different artists from what I'm supposed to teach them mm -hmm. from the textbook, but it's not, it's not really digging yeah. into the surface of what we really need as as a people. As a culture. As a culture. Yeah, so when I'm painting, like that self-love painting, I have the self-love painting. Those words, I want people to look at the words and I want them to, 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 to repeat what's on the canvas. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am loving, I, I am powerful. Um, I speak blessings over my future. Just powerful words, words of substance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, it, it is my duty. It's, it's, it's my duty and I, I understand the importance of my position. And I take it so serious, so serious because our people, like we need it. We need it. I feel like we've been, we've, we've been like walking around blindfolded for so long. And they tell us that we've been freed and all of that stuff. And it's just like, yeah, we don't have the shackles around our arms anymore. And we don't have people so us we can't walk into certain places anymore, but our minds are still locked in cages. And us as artists, everything that we're putting out, we're helping people free themselves mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So our art, like it, it changes lives. And like I said, that going back to you, when I want to see a page, I was like, go ahead, go ahead, girl. <laughs> your it's the artist. same for you too. <laughs> it's the same for me when I see your pieces and I feel all that emotion and I feel all that healing energy. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. Mm -hmm. so. This is like amazing. It's amazing one just to sit here in this room with two amazing strong black women 
who are very talented and are so dedicated to helping and healing the community through, through your work because you know as black women we go through so much and we oftentimes feel this obligation to do this work but it's heavy work mm -hmm. and it definitely takes a toll on you mm -hmm. i think it's very important like you said to acknowledge that the work is a vessel in a sense for you to pour you know um, all of your life's experiences and, and that healing process that you're going through into it, but also to pour out as well onto other people. So not only is it an outlet, but you know it's a mechanism for change as well. So I think that's just one of the amazing things that we're able to do as black women is to take things and turn them into you know 12 times as much as what we we had. You know we're multipliers and mm -hmm. we're resourceful. So. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that you guys have been able to build like this camaraderie as black women through um, through your amazing work that you're doing. Um, I think also one of the things you touched on just about like representation and how important that is. Um, could both of you guys speak just a little bit to you know the representation that maybe you've had that has led you into this space or even just why you think it's important to see you know yourself reflected in the high places that you know, you would like to go, or, you know, just just maybe even non you know, conventional, unconventional spaces that maybe we haven't always been um, seen in before, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I said there was no representation for me growing up at all. Um, I was always into art as well. Um, even in my high school art class, um, even living in a majority black town, um, we were still in that same curriculum of just, you know, Vincent Van Gogh, you know, Matisse, Monet, you know, Michelangelo. Um, and that was really it for me. But interestingly enough, I never really created art in those styles. Um, and I wouldn't say I ever really aspired to. Um, but I remember being in my high school art class, and I would get some opportunities, like when the different shows would come up and things. Um, from my art teacher, but even, and she was a woman, she was a white woman, um, but even there, she focused a lot of her energy on the male artists, and we had this specific group of male artists who were exchange students from Germany, and I just remember them giving a lot of the opportunities. Um, but I persevered, and I, I did end up going to college for art, um, and at Clark Atlanta, it was really kind of like a starting point for me where I still didn't know all that was out there in terms of um, black female artists or black artists in general. It wasn't until maybe my junior year where we I took an African-American history class and I sat in um, on an artist club with Charlie Palmer and I was so inspired. And I'm like seeing this like, you know, black artists like doing work with Coca-Cola and like all of these amazing things and it really awakened something in me where I realized I think in that moment that this was even the slightest possibility of a you know for a successful career um, and then even when I graduated um, I came home and I, I also became a teacher and I think it was when I became a teacher that really transformed my own art practice even further where, like you said, I was teaching these um, young black and brown students. My student body was 50% um, African-American, 50% um, Latin, uh, you know, Hispanic. And so I thought it was extremely important because I'm thinking about my upbringing and how I came from this, you know, artistic upbringing where I didn't see any artists that looked like me. And so my main mission, I think I was handed a curriculum. <laughs> I was handed the curriculum when I took the job um, right across the bridge in Camden, and I immediately was like, no, <laughs> this is not going to work. <laughs> like, you're trying to honestly, like, run me out the door if I attempt to teach this to our, our kids. And from there, it really became my mission to create my own curriculum, um, which I did. I, I want to say I, I did the best I could in my first year of teaching. And by the next year, I had completely created my own curriculum, um, showing artists like, you know, Barkley Hendrix, and, you know, um, we did a lot of Frida Kahlo and Salvador Dali. We did um, a lot of, you know, Charlie Palmer, um, you know, Henry Osawa Tanner, and 
you know, even a lot of the arts of today, like Lavette Ballard and, um, you know, just so many, there's so many to pull from, Derek Fritcher, there's so many to pull from. <laughs> um, and that was really important to me. And I think that has been my mission as a black woman artist. I do a lot to really inspire the youth that are coming behind us. Um, I think it's so important for them to live in this world now where they can see, you know, a black male artist, a black female artist, and realize that this is actually a career path that you can go into and that you can find success in. Um, because I didn't have that. And so, yeah. Uh, it's it's very it's very hard to see yourself in these spaces and um, for so long we were told that you know we weren't the ones to be making art with a capital A so mm -hmm. I think now it's really exciting to be in this place where you know black art is is it's the moment right now and uh, more people are seeing that and we've always known that mm -hmm. uh, but. It's, it's a really special place to be, um, even as a black curator, you know, advocating for other black artists and the work that, you know, that embodies is, it's a constant journey, but it's really exciting at the same time just to know that you're taking part in the cultivation and stewardship of, you know, another generation and other people feeling empowered to, to continue on the work because it's important and it's really changing our communities. So, um, Andromeda, do you have any last statements or representation? Representation. Um, yeah, like, um, this is all new for me. Even though I, I was an art teacher, mm -hmm. it, it was a, something that I wasn't searching for, something that God kind of like put in, in my path. He just kind of like set me on the path to uh, being an art teacher. And um, even as an art teacher, um, creating my own curriculum, it was it was a beautiful experience. I did um I had the freedom to to uh, choose the artists that my students study, and um, I came across Basquiat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just had like um, a strong connection with his art. I could I could like literally feel I could feel his passion. I could feel his love. Um, I could I could feel his art. And I had that experience with um, other um, black artists as well, but for some reason I just kept being pulled back to Basquiat. And um, my students, they, they all knew me for uh, teaching them about Basquiat, just pounding <laughs> Basquiat. I don't know what it was, or what it is about him, but I just feel like he was uh, his story. Um, it's, a, it's a sad story. But he was such an amazing artist, and he had such um, he had a beautiful heart, and he was taken advantage of, and um, I think that's something that's still kind of like it happens to to a lot of us because we don't some it's it's like our like I said our people are so strong, we're so powerful, um, and it just comes natural <laughs> to us. And um, a lot of other people can can see our light, mm -hmm. and we don't even realize that we have that that that, that big, bright, beautiful light. Mm -hmm. it, it comes. It's, it's who we are. It's like it's just a natural thing. So, um, yeah, like this, this, all of this right now. This is it's new. It feels new, even though I've been doing it for like six years now. Mm -hmm. But it still feels so fresh and it feels new. And. Um, I do, I understand the importance of me being in this space. I understand the importance of me using my voice more and um, just showing people how, how powerful it is to like go within and to just pull whatever it is that's deeply within you and to just put it on the canvas. Don't worry about what other people are gonna say um, and just, just put it out there. Um, and just by doing that, it's like you, you get to heal yourself, but you also get to heal your, your people. You get to heal everybody. Everyone that's looking at your art is gonna take something from it. And being as though it's coming from your heart, like they're gonna feel it. So yeah, um, us just doing what we're doing, just us not being afraid to, to express ourselves and to keep going. 
Um, it's, it's extremely important. It's, it's valuable. Um, and it's just, it's, it's everything to me now. It's, it's everything. So yeah, I definitely understand the importance of it. Mm-hmm. No, that's, that's amazing. We do need to keep going. Um, and I, you know, sometimes that's just the message at the end of the day is just keep going, keep shining your light. Right. Um, so we're coming to the end of our program. Um, I want to open up the floor to any questions. I know we have some folks in the gallery today, so if anybody would like to pose some questions for our artists, they're definitely open to chat. And if anybody who's watching us live has any questions, I'm sure that you know they can drop those in the chat as well. So if you guys want to, you know, ask a little bit more about Jasmine and Andromeda's practice. Um, they both have really amazing work that is for sale in the gallery right now and on display in the Phenomenal Woman Show. Um, so I'm going to open up the floor to anybody. So, so I have a question. Um, I'm going to stay off camera, but um, <laughs> Bob Jones, one of the, the co-owners of Movie Jones. Question and comment. I'm someone who loves the arts, mm-hmm. but visual arts, such as yourselves are what really moved me. To hear you ladies speak about your passion and how you feel about your art and how you're hoping that other people feel about your art is just, it's in my heart. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing that's so beautiful is that you're young women. Um, so you have these futures ahead of you to continue to teach, to continue to love and impassion others. That being said, for each of you, what do you see moving forward? This is a taste of it. That's all three of you. Yes, that's right. Oh my gosh. (laughs) That's a big (laughs) one, right? It is a big (laughs) question. I never, I, uh, I think, you know, so many of us have been told to follow this plan, this very strict plan, especially early on in life of, you know, to get from point A to point B, this is what you need to do, and this is how it needs to go and look and feel. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot of these people are telling us, you know, telling us this to, because they love us and they want us to, you know, be successful. And, and oftentimes, you know, it works. It'll get you to where you need to go. But I think at a certain point, you know, you have to really um, go go inside and like have this internal, you know, reflection of what success looks like for you and. Um, just what evolution looks like as well. I think personally, like as somebody who spent a lot of time in academia, has worked in the institutions, and just at, at a really young age, you know, like being able to walk in rooms that a lot of black women, you know, prior to me have not been able to do. Uh, it's exciting, it's terrifying at the same time, mm-hmm. often, yes. oftentimes, but I think it's invigorating and it really, you know, it's what drives me forward is just the true passion I have for what I do and, and the work that I'm doing and how art just charges me up when I get to see it and what, how it excites me to advocate for other artists. So I think, you know, at this point, because I have maybe been so responsible or really, you know, tried to thoughtfully, you know, take my first steps into the field and things like that, now I really just want to continue to feel out the direction I should go and like allow my intuition to guide me and uh, I'll let God guide me into you know the work that I'm supposed to continue to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like I've had I've just been getting opportunities that were far beyond you know what I could have imagined on my own in doing so. So I think yeah that's that's definitely I just want to keep you know I want to keep following God's plan for you know, what curatorial work I should be doing or what creative work I should be doing. And I think the opportunities are so expansive now for what that work looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not just, you know, being in a traditional exhibition space or, you know, or working with traditional visual artists as well. It's like, it could could be larger than life or it could be, you know, very niche work that is is your passion. So yeah, that's really the direction that I feel I'm going in. That's what I was thinking. Um, divinely guided. I'm just being divinely guided. I have blind faith. I have no idea where I'm going, but I know for sure that I'm definitely on the right path. And I just know that as long as I stay true to myself and I do things that are like heart-based, 
Um, I, I, I know that something beyond my wildest imagination is, is gonna mm -hmm. is gonna happen. I have no idea what, <laughs> but um, for the past three years since I've been pursuing my passion full time, um, God has been wowing me every single day. I have no idea how I've made it this far living off of my art <laughs> so <laughs> as a single mom. But um, my faith has been heightened like times a thousand. And the relationship that I have with God is uh, it's, it's just so strong and so beautiful. Um, I just feel like I'm being divinely guided. I feel like I'm going to go up and with God every step of the way. And I'm just I'm just following my heart and and just um, honoring my intuition and just being faithful and righteous and, and true. And that's why I'm here now. So. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's real. It's it's really just having faith, um, staying the course, continuing mm -hmm. to create the work. Um, and really um, making intentional decisions. I had a good friend who once said, um, life is the sum of your decisions. And so it's really just trying to go within and um, really being prayerful and faithful about the decisions that you're making um, and continuing to put one foot before the other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, um, I think that both what well, each one of you, and you two in particular, have already kind of touched on something that takes a lot of people a lifetime to be in touch with. And that's how important the work that you're doing is, and how gifted you are to be creative. And with that said, what I want to encourage you to do, and, and it's kind of piggybacking on what Robin said, in fact, that was like a question. <laughs> um, but not so much a question, but to encourage each one of you, since you have that profound insight, as to the importance of art. You got that. So you now are charged with using that knowledge to impart it to the masses, and not just to brown and black people, but to really look at where you can go in terms of public art, where you can go in terms of administration, where you can go in terms of writing, where you can go in terms of curating, where you can go in terms of spreading not just the information that's a wealth of information about black art and black culture, where it comes from and how important it is, but also that it, it needs to be a part of every living being. It's a way to, I'm, I'm a therapist, a psychotherapist. It is a way to express your emotions. And one of the things I laugh at that both of you said, and you didn't say it with the profundity that it should have said it. Black people are just very spiritual, they're very passionate. So of course uh, most of these white artists don't, don't, don't move you the way they should. Everybody else can go to the Louvre and then come out mesmerized, but you didn't see what is our essence, and you all have that. You see it, you touch it, you feel it, you experience it, so you are charged with um, using it to make a difference and, and helping people to tap into that which is theirs inherently and using it to evolve. And that's what you guys are in the process of doing is evolving and it's going to be exciting to follow, follow you and see how you evolve. Well, I'm going to come uh, back into, this, into the shot. I want to say this. I must, I must admit I was very taken by your comments. Um, obviously, the art and your expressions of how you express yourself in your, in your art is very individualized, which is important. It has to come from within. And you guys did a great job telling the audience how it all ties into what I believe the essence of what Juneteenth is all about. Uh, you're phenomenal women. Um, all three of you. You got great upside. You know, we are, are of a much older 
vintage than you guys are. And, <laughs> and the things that you said, the things that you have said resonate. And it's, it's important. And we're so, we're so glad to have had you here at the Lee Jones Gallery. But I want you all to do before we go off camera is to give the audience your um, social media, so, social media, uh, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, and I'm gonna step away, and I would, I would all say. Social media handle is Andromeda Cook Studio. My website is andromedacookstudio.com. Everything is Andromeda Cook. <laughs> Either Andromeda Cook or Andromeda Cook Studio. So you can find me anywhere online Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube. And uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm all over. And I'm Jazlyn Sabri. Um, on Instagram at Jasmine Sabri and www.jasmineSabri.com. I'm Zinzi Harley. You can find me on Instagram at Zinzi Lohan, C I N D Z I L O H A N. And I also have a quarterly arts and culture publication of Zinzine that you can find on Instagram at Z I N D Z I N E and Zinzine.com. Hey, do we have. Thank you for having us. Thank you for chatting with me today. It's really exciting to come to this gallery. Um, it's a beautiful space. There's definitely a lot to be seen here, so more people need to get to Moody Jones. Um, and come see this amazing show. Um, I was just listening to Janelle Monet's Phenomenal Woman album right before I came here, so it's perfect timing, and I think, um, you know, there's, there's just so many ways that we can say, like, and speak to being phenomenal women. Um, so this was, yeah, I feel very empowered after talking to you too, um, and inspired, and I definitely think I got a deeper look into, you know, what inspires you too, so. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can we get a picture like 